Hi, my name is Justin Yomot. And I'm Tommy Terrio. And welcome back to the CNC Podcast. This week, we are going to be talking about our top five at each position all time. But before that, let's take a look at card of the week, which is this Nick Magical Forced Bowman Chrome Auto, graded 9 in the autograph, got a 10 by Beckett. The sub games are 8.5 on centering, 10 on edges, 9.5 on the surface, and 9.5 on corners. As a big Cubs fan, I was really happy to the I was really happy that we acquired Nick Madrigal, especially since I was a big fan of him before. And so I'm super excited to see what he can do for the Cubs next year. Yeah, despite the taint of losing Kimbrell, getting a player back like Madrigal is something special. Well, Cody Horror has been better um, than Kimbrell since the trade, so I'm thinking that the Cubs definitely won that trade. There's definitely an argument now, to be made there. It's, I don't think it's even close as an argument. I think we easily won that trade. Now, let's get on into the episode. Uh, so, my number five outfielder is Ted Williams. I think he just hit for such a high average hitting, having a 400 batting average one year. He was just dominant, great in the outfield, too. Really wish he would definitely be higher if he didn't have to miss a few years to fight in, I believe it was World War II. Um, so who's your number five, Tommy? So for number five, I put Hank Aaron, Hammer and Hank. He was the home run king, home run king for multiple uh, for many years until uh, Bonds broke his record, which matter of debate. We're not going to get into that today, but uh, I think that it's very interesting because, like, he had some other notable accomplishments, but. Like, that's his big thing. I believe it was when he got 714. Like, it was a big deal. But I just think that there isn't enough else that would propel him higher up in my in my rankings. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Uh, my number four is Roberto Clemente. I'm a huge Clemente fan. I've done multiple slow projects on him. Uh, he was great all around, getting exactly 3,000 hits. And another player whose career could have been so much more if he didn't die in the plane crash helping the country. I'm blanking on which country right now. It was, I believe but, it was Puerto Rico. No, it wasn't. He was from Puerto Rico. He was helping a different country that was struck yeah. by a hurricane. Um, he's just all, all around a great guy. My favorite Pirates player ever. Um, he was great at everything. He like he would say, pitch me inside, I'll hit for 400. Pitch me outside, I'll hit 40 home runs. Like, there was nowhere you could put a pitch that he wouldn't get to it. And again, if he didn't die tragically before his time was up, he would definitely be a lot higher on my list. Yeah, there's so there's so many places that his career could have gone. It's unfortunate it ended the way that it did. For me, yeah, I'm just put, glad that he did get to the 3,000 hits before he died. For sure. For me, I had the Say Hey Kid, Willie Mays. He was, in a, I mean... Most one of the most iconic catches in baseball history, and like there's so many. I mean, like I could go on about all that he brought to the Giants, um, but I think that there's other players still, and we'll get to them later. That I just feel, again, it's kind of like for me, it's also kind of like um, Hank Aaron, where. They got one or two things going for them that's going to send them up to the moon. They're in the top five all time, but they're not the complete package for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, Next up for number three for me is the kid, Ken Griffey Jr., truly a five-tool player. He just, he did it all. I just got nothing to say. He was all around great. He's my number three. Yeah, for me, I had, I had Mickey Mantle, the greatest switch hitter of all time. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, great from both sides of the plate, great in the field. Again, there's not much to say there. His re- his like his legend speaks for itself. It does. Um, for my number two is actually you've already had him on it. I had uh Hank Aaron. I think his power was enough to single handedly get him into the top two for me. I also think that his defense, while it's not great, is kind of looked over. He, he was pretty solid defensively. And I just think his power just gets him over Ken Griffey with his Ken's all-around talent. Hmm. 
I, I think that's very interesting. And you, I believe you said uh, Ted Williams for five, correct? Yeah, I did. So we switch. I had Ted Williams at two. He holds the he holds yeah. this um streak for most consec. He he holds the consecutive games hit streak. So I mean, what else can you say? Justin already touched on the point that if not if not for missing a couple years due to serving his country, there's so much that could have been done. I mean, his last career hit being a home run. I mean, what a way to top off a legendary career. Yeah. Ted Williams is great. I'm a big fan of his. Uh, number one, you're number four. I had Willie Mays. I think he is the best defensive outfielder of all time. And I think that his hitting is, again, something that's a little looks over a little too much. Like He was great hitting for contact. His power was also looked after like he was he had the power that and not a lot of people talked about i think he is the best outfield of all time yeah i think we had a lot of similarities i feel like it's hard to go many other places but for me one that i i mean that all campaign for number one babe ruth i'll say it like i mean he's the home run king and he did it without all this other stuff that people are using now like if he had, if Babe Ruth had have had steroids, we would have had a thousand home run king. This guy was smoking cigars, drinking, like drinking four or five beers before each game. Like he, there, he was not in shape; he wouldn't work out. Like if he had have had the technology and everything else that we have today, it's I scare to think what he could have done to that league. And to top it yeah. all off, I know this isn't relevant to the to him being an outfielder, but he was also a great pitcher. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is pretty good. He just missed my list. Um, now moving on to infield, my number five guy, Lou Gehrig, uh, Babe Ruth's, uh, so to speak, Robin. Um, he's amazing. He has a lot of power. Great, pretty great in the field. Definitely deserves to be in the top five in my eyes. Yeah. Um, I I agree, and I have him later on in my list. But for me. Number five, Ozzie Smith. What an electrifying infielder. Like, it was somebody, when you were turning on the highlights and you were saying, okay, who did good Who did good today? It was Ozzie Smith every time. There was some sort of defensive highlight. Like, today we look at these great uh, infielders, Francisco Lindor, Javi Baez, coincidentally teammates. But Ozzie Smith was doing that 30 years ago. Like he's just an, mm-hmm. such an electric player, not to mention yeah. um, the hit, not his hitting capabilities. Yeah, a little off topic. Um, uh, uh, my brother actually has his rookie con in his selection. That's really cool. That's yeah. really cool. Uh, we'll probably see it as card of the week sometime in the future. Hopefully. Yeah. So, um, my number four guy, Honus Wagner. He is overlooked way too much. Again. Another guy who's on a rival team for me that I just love. He is so overlooked, it is ridiculous. He hit great, and he also played in the dead ball era, and he still hit home runs constantly. And don't even get me started on the field. His glove barely fit his hand, and he's still a top 10 fielder of all time. He's looked upon, he's looked past way too often. Yeah, I I mean, I was talking about uh, Ruth with the capabilities that we have today. Honus is another one that definitely deserves it. He um, he was one I think probably would be six for me personally if I had if I had to say okay here's number six guy I would put him there. But for me, See, number like that, four. That's, that's oh, go fair. Ahead. Sorry, I want to reply. You said he'd be a number six guy. Sorry, that's fair. But at the same time, I feel like that's still like disrespecting him a little. Like like I'm saying. You're not overlooking him so as other people would, but in my eyes, I think he would be better than who you had, Ozzy Smith. I think he's better. That's just my yeah. opinion, though. That's just my opinion. Um, for me, number number four, I had I had Derek Jeter. I, I mean, I went. I want if you want to talk about Ozzy Smith having electrifying plays, Derek Jeter being. I mean. His is something that's mo- his most iconic play is something that's still modeled today. Mm-hmm. And I just think the combination of the hitting, the fielding, and his ability to stand out among all the Bronx Bombers, everybody that's played under the banner of the New York Yankees, 
and to still be such a great player really speaks to, I mean, he's also a good person too. Yeah. Uh, my number three, Jackie Robinson, not only did he break the color barrier, but he did it with a Hall of Fame worthy career. Just all around greatness. Like, just like Griffey, who was my number three, uh, he's, they're, both, they're just both all around great and both top three in their respective positions. Like, I think that's great. Jackie is the best second baseman ever, and Ken, I would say, um, second best center fielder behind Willie Mays. I'm talking about top three in outfielder and infield if you group them all together, both easily top three. Yeah. Um, I mean, okay, so Jackie's biggest account I had I had him at three as well. I'm just gonna keep going. Yeah. So uh his biggest, I mean, his biggest accomplishment and the thing he's gonna be most remembered for is breaking the color barrier. Mm-hmm. But it everybody forgets about the fact that he was still such a great player. Like, that's why Branch Rickey uh, signed him in the first place. It, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's good. I mean, it's not – diversity wasn't as set to the forefront as it is today. Like, you don't see um, signing people of different races as a diversity move back then. You would just see it as quality. And he was a quality player. Mm-hmm. So – I kind of disagree. Uh, Jackie Robinson's another guy who I did a lot of school projects on. I know quite a lot. Um, I feel like you saying he was signed, Branch Ricky, Branch Ricky signed him as a quality player. That is part of it, but another big part was he signed him because he knew that Jackie could not go and yell at fans who heckled him or called him bad names. He knew that Jackie would respond by playing well. So I think, yeah, he was signed because he was good, but you also have to acknowledge the fact that he was able to keep his tempo down and that was also a big reason why he was chosen yeah i mean full self-humility here i wouldn't be able to do it put in his position so that's off i don't think anyone really could i think he was the best man for that i don't think having a hall of fame career amidst that to break the barrier yeah number two i have wade boggs um great fielder absolute great fielder and he has a good power bat i have him just above jackie by the smallest of hairs it's i don't i we i promise you we didn't look at each other's papers before doing this but i have weight bogs at two as well so yeah. my thing with it is that i think it's a slightly wider margin in be- between him and jackie than i think you have him at i mean you talk about his power you talk about his fielding um, I mean, the curse struck him. He isn't, I mean, unfortunately he didn't win a championship with the Sox, but he was still such a great player. Mm-hmm. He was great. The only reason I think he's like super close is just Jackie's speed doesn't even match Boggs. Fair. And like, that, it, that makes it super close. Yeah. Because you don't, like, there's not a whole ton of, like, there's obviously fast players, but there's not a whole ton of fast players who can just steal home without it being a pass ball. Yeah, we and don't Jack see that one of those players. We don't see that type of speed very often. Yeah, like, there are players who could come close, but there's, I, Jackie's one of the fastest to ever play. Definitely. My number one is Mike Schmidt. Just overall, again, just like I said about Jackie, just like I said about Ken, just all around greatness. And it's hard not to have him at your number one. Yeah. that I mean, another great pick. For me, I, though, put somebody you had earlier on. I put Lou Gehrig. The former Lou Gehrig teammate. Won. Okay, hear me out. Great hit. I mean, his hitting totals are amazing. He had an amazing batting average. I mean, but I mean, the fact that he did it while battling ALS, like... Yeah, that's another thing to consider is the guy had a disease that despite all the breakthroughs and medication over the past 80 years, we still haven't found a cure for he was battling through it when we had no idea what it was essentially. And that's still true. putting on one of the greatest careers we've ever seen. I agree. I agree. 100% what you're saying. And me saying number one, that was not me saying he he definitely deserves to it does an argument for me number one. But what surprised me means you think Wade Boggs is the best third baseman ever, and you have Mike Schmidt under Boggs. 
that's what surprised me. I was I kind of, kind of expected for you to have Mike Schmidt number one. Nope. I'm surprised. I disagree that you think Boggs is better than Schmidt. I think that's a I think that's a debate we can continue later. Make that a whole episode definitely. discussion. We don't, we don't have time for this episode, but that's definitely something we're gonna look into for a future one. Oh, for sure. Oh, uh, on the catcher number five, we got um Jackie's former teammate Roy Campanella. I sorry if I butchered the name. I'm not good with it, but he was all around great again. Uh, one again, another one of the first color players to play. He was just great. Um. I think he's again another player who gets overlooked a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's hard when you have an, an another person's name attached to yours. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the the person that I'll go with is another former Red Sox, Carlton Fisk, Red Sox legend. I mean, again, there's it's hard. Like there's been a lot, the, the, like, even if you want to narrow down to just the Red Sox top five catchers of all time, you can go Carly or strength. Like there's so many people, but I think mm-hmm. for me, Fisk does it, his fielding, his hitting just all again, it's just that all around greatness that you need to mm-hmm. really propel yourself into one of the best of all time. Uh, my number four, Ivan Pudge Rodriguez. Again, just like I said about Schmidt and Jackie and Ken, just all around greatness. Yeah. And that's what Pudge was. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there's not much I to have... say. Like everyone knows he was good at everything. He's a top tier catcher. Like there's just not much for me to say. No, I don't I don't have anything to say either. I, I had him at four as well. Like the like he was an amazing, an amazing player. Uh in a in a recent interview we did with Adam, like he talked about mm-hmm. it and like hearing a, like a professional catcher's perspective on how good he was really just solidifies. Yeah, yeah, he was so good at what he did. He was great. My number three, I got Yogi Berra. Just a great catcher, really great at throwing runners out. That was his specialty. Um, his hitting and throwing too. Like, just again, what catchers catching is is you got to be overall good at defense, and so that's really what Yogi was. Yeah, uh, I have Yogi later on in my list. We'll continue. Uh, I'll discuss him when we get to that. But I had Mike Piazza, another. And if you want to, if you want to talk about team legends, you need needn't look further than than him. I mean, come on. I mean, there's mm-hmm. so many iconic things we can talk about, but so many. I mean, great fielding, great hitting. I don't know what else you want me to say about him. Mike Piazza, my favorite catcher of all time. I love him. Um, he's my number two guy. I really want to put him number one because he's my favorite, but he is not the best catcher of all time. Just phenomenal power, phenomenal fielding, all around great and all around phenomenal. I love Mike and his power. I think it's the best part of his game, and that's honestly his defense is right behind it. Overall, great player. Big fan of his. Yeah, I mean, you said you said everything else there is. I mean, what an amazing player. Um, for me, my number two that I wanted to go to, I, I had to pick him, Johnny Bench. I believe you. I believe I I I believe I don't know if you put it as card of the week, but you have uh, a Johnny Bench card if you want to pull that one out. Yeah. Um, I know I'm pretty sure I showed it in the Adam view. I don't think I've done it used as card of the week yet. Number to 50. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised you have Matt too. I think he's number one. But uh, continue with what you were saying. I, uh, I mean, backstop is the word referred to when it comes to catcher. I mean, I don't know what other word describes Johnny Bench better. Yeah, his hitting was great. But what I'm focusing on is his fielding, his defense behind the plate, and his ability to call the game. Like, there, there's only one player better at this position, which we'll get to in a minute. I don't think there is anyone better at the position. Like, you kind of nailed it over the head. His defensively was great. He was also great offensively. I'll show the card again. Big fan of this card. Uh, you probably can't see it greatly, but it's number 50. Uh, number 15. Um 
Beautiful card. Really like Johnny Bench too. Um, I really like all catchers. Like I didn't really realize until we interviewed Adam when I pulled out all the the catcher cards I had to show off during the interview as well. Um, I really like catchers. Like there's a lot of players catchers that I really like. Like we're talking about Piazza. I like Piazza. I like Johnny Bench. I like Wilson Contreras, Tyler Stevenson, rookie for the Reds. Like there's a lot of catchers I like, and I didn't like really realize that until. I prepared for an interview with a pro catcher who also yeah. collects catcher's cards. But I don't think there's anyone who's ever done catching better than Johnny Bench. And that's just simply – that's all I have to say for it is I don't think anyone has done better at catching. And see, I'm going to go with – I think you put him at three. I'm going I'm going Yogi. Yogi. That's fair. You could definitely argue Yogi for number one. So, I mean, first we can just start off with the Yogiisms. I mean – some of the greatest and funniest statements you'll find are yogiisms. But I mean, going into his actual like on the field talent, I mean, he played with Mantle. He played with all these greats. He was part of the Yankees that won so many championships together. But his ability to call a game, I mean, he, he's such a like you forget just how smart and intelligent you have to be to be a catcher and to fully control the entire game and yogi embodied everything of that mm-hmm. yogi's great honestly yogi should probably be on my list number two and my piazza number three but there's a little bit of bias in me because i like piazza so much yeah i think that'll also i'm come willing out to no admit that i was a little about. biased on my picture list that's okay that'll happen I- at least I wasn't biased in my infield. I wanted to put Ryan Sandberg or oh, in my top five infield really badly, but he's like seven or eight. Top five second baseman though, easily. Yeah, for sure. I, I could I could stand by that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so before we look at pictures, make sure to hit the subscribe button. We're so close to 100 on YouTube, and make sure to subscribe on every other platform as well. Yeah. We, we're posting con. We're putting out content every Saturday on Instagram, TikTok. Yeah, there's content every day of the week except for Sundays, as we edit and get everything ready for the podcast on Mondays. So make sure to follow us on all the social medias. Now let's take a look at the pictures. Number five, there's an award named after him, Cy Young. He is great, and there's nothing more to really say about it. He was very dominant in his day and age. Yeah, see, I put if I if, again another honorable mention for me is Cy Young. I had I would have had him at six. I say that because what Jacob Degrom specific like the name that first comes to mind is Jacob Degrom. What he has proven is that win, wins are circumstantial. Yeah, Cy Young got what five hundred and seven of them. So you know some of the I mean, if you're winning as a pitcher, you're still going to be putting together quality starts to put your p- team in a position to win. But I don't value that as highly as other as other uh, measures. So for me, my number five is Bob Feller. He pitched for twenty years. To have the sustainability to pitch at such a high level for twenty years is mind boggling to me because we see players in every sport now that are fizzling out they have great runs for three to four years but then just die off their careers just fall off but bob feller stayed consistently amazing for 20 years Mm -hmm. he bob feller was great for number four i finally get to have a cubs player in it dread maddox just all around great just like i've been saying about ivan Jackie Schmidt Griffey. He's just he was all around great. He got the wins. He had the low ERA. He painted the corners, which is insane. He was just always good. I don't think he ever really had a bad season. Yeah, and I mean he has one of the best single game accomplishments you can have. It's complete game shutout in under a hundred and under a hundred pitches is a Maddox, which is such an amazing such an amazing feat. For me, my number four, Dennis Eckersley. I mean, in my opinion, second best uh, relief slash closing pitcher of all time. And I think that there's, I mean, again, there's not that there's not that much that I can say that hasn't been said a thousand times already. A dominant pitcher that, I mean, 
did it like very few else can and ever probably ever will like a lot of these guys that we're talking about in any of these like the success they've been able to put up that's rivaled by so little so little players like i mean even now that i can think of looking at the current pitchers i don't see anyone that i see breaking these top this top five pitchers list yeah um i think if we're not counting relief pitchers i think the drum will get into the top five at the end of his career but number three for me my only reliever closer on the list the best closer and if you think it's someone else you are just completely wrong is marino rivera absolute dominant shut every game down you rarely would even see a base runner when he was pitching he's completely dominant Every outing, easily. He's easily the best closer, and if you think otherwise, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, I have him, I believe I have him at three as well. So yeah, I have I have Rivera at three as well. I mean, what what do you say? The cut, cut fastball, his cut fastball is one of the most iconic pitches, like, uh, attributed to favorite. a single pitcher. Like you could put that in if he if he had to pitch that cutter for every single pitch and wasn't allowed to pitch any other pitch, he would still have about 80% of his dominance. But like Justin said, Carlos. you weren't Carlos getting my favorite. one of the best pitches, and he was able to execute it flawlessly. Mm-hmm. I'm always using the cutter and MLB the show. It's my bread and butter pitch in that game. Just you know, uh, you knew. Two? Huh? I was just gonna say that you knew if you were playing the Yankees, you didn't have to just have to worry about the hitting. You had to out you had to outgun the Yankees and still get past Mariano Rivera. Mm-hmm. My number two, I got Randy Johnson. Again, just like I've said about Greg and almost half the other players, all around dominance. That's what you need to get into the top five. It's what Randy did easily, day in and day out. Simple as that. He was always dominant. He was dominant in everything. And see, I had a different different southpaw for you. Sandy Koufax. Dodgers legend. I mean, I don't know what, again, it's another one of those things. What else can I say? Painted the corners, great fastball. Like, he did everything you would expect. Like, like, when you think southpaw, that's what you think. Like, there's only a couple names that come to mind. Randy Johnson, you think Randy Johnson, you think Sandy Koufax, and there's just a couple other names. But just to perform at that high of a level against a majority, like, we always know about if you're a righty batter, you're generally going to, you're generally going to be better against lefty pitchers. And in a world even that's dominated by righties to still have that kind of success as a lefty is amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, my number one is bloody nose himself, Nolan Ryan. Just so good at everything. He, there was no flaw in his game ever. He never had a bad, like, even if he had a bad start, he would still come back and keep his team somewhat in the game. Easily, easily the best pitcher of all time. He's so good, so great at everything. There was no flaw in his game at all. Yeah, he is he is the one percent of pitching. I mean, he is everything you want in a pitcher. Hard throwing, seven no hitters. I it was in this year that has had so many no hitters in this season of baseball. He has more than an entire se- like that's great. Like in other years, that wouldn't be that big to think about, but. When we think about all the no hitters that have happened this year, the fact that he had more of them in his in his career is amazing. Mm-hmm. He's insane. I mean, we could we could talk for days and just have an ongoing live stream of just us talking for years about mm-hmm. how good Nolan Ryan was. We really can. He's he's something special. Was well. Yeah. That's it for this episode. Thank you all so much for watching. Yep, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. See you next time.